Oh, what a lovely day outside. I might go for a frolic after I finish this. All right then, so an electrophile uh, forms a, a bond with a, a nucleophile. The nucleophile donates both electrons to the bond, a coordinate bond or a dative covalent bond, same idea. Most covalent bonds have an electron coming from each species, overlapping and uh, forming a covalent bond. But for a dative covalent bond, two come from one and none come from that one. So the one that's donating the electrons to the bond, those two electrons is the, is the nucleophile. Uh, so what can happen, there's curly arrows, I have the nucleophile donating its electrons, and then that gives me N, U, E, like that. A little bit more about uh, electrophiles, just for recap, if you know this, fast forward. So uh, they can be positive, NO2+, plus. that makes sense, they love electrons, they're electrophilic, it's positive. It can be something like hydrogen fluoride. Now that molecule itself is neutral, but... Uh, Fluorine has a much higher electronegativity than hydrogen. And so now this part of the molecule is behaving like an electrophile, loves electrons. It's a little bit positive. Or you could have something neutral like a bromine. When you brominate alkenes, you have to know about this. So bromine appears to be nonpolar and it's neutral. So where's the positive aspect of that to make it a electrophile that loves electrons? Well, if you have a if it approaches an alkene, alkenes have uh, four electrons here in their double bond, and that's going to kind of repel the electrons away in the bromine, making this end of the bromine a little bit negative, and that end a little bit positive, and there you go. There's the nucleophilic part. Right, there are two uh, types of benzene, aren't there? There's the, the one with the ring, the hybridized version, with the pi electrons going round and round and round, or the cyclohexyl 13 triene. So let's do the uh, more modern version of benzene. I'm going to pop a hydrogen there. Of course, there's a uh, five more hydrogens, but I'm just going to have one for clarity and add the electrophile. Electrophile loves electrons. Well, it's probably going to grab the electrons from out of that ring of pi electrons, isn't it? And what's that going to make? The hydrogen is now going to be next to that electrophile. So what happened to uh, that positive charge? Well, those electrons that left from that central ring, uh, that ring is now disrupted. Uh, we show it with a dotty half ring and uh, a plus in the middle. So moving on from that, the electrons from the carbon-hydrogen bond are going to reform the ring. And the reaction is complete. The ring has been reformed with the electrophile on. Don't forget the H+. Plus. The other way you could do it is with cyclohexa 135 triene and add an electrophile. Let's pop another hydrogen on as well, that one there. So these electrons could go towards the electrophile, breaking that double bond. So now I have a hydrogen there, I have the electrophile just popped on. And I actually know that that carbon there is positive. So instead of the ring generally being a bit positive, I can localize the positive charge on that carbon. And then the same thing's gonna happen is uh, the electrons are gonna be returned from that carbon hydrogen bond. And Bob's your uncle got the same product. Plus H plus with my electrophiles now on there. All right, so... Uh... Specific electrophiles, uh, they're in the books, but uh, it says in the syllabus it won't be assessed. So NO2 is quite a popular one. And this C2H5+, plus. I think that's the positive E file there, isn't it? All right then. So, I don't think so too much. I need a better bridging word. Bridge. Uh, there are five reactions of alkenes. Alkenes, paradoxically, you could argue, are more reactive than alkanes. Well, hold on, alkenes have a carbon-carbon double bond stronger. So why are they more reactive than alkanes? Well, it seems like this bridge has gone off, but no, it's, we continue. Uh, alkenes have lots of uh, electrons in the middle. They're four electrons, so they're susceptible to electrophile attack. Okay, so what's this got to do with benzene? Well, benzene actually has, you could argue, four alkene, uh, sorry, three alkene carbon-carbon double bonds there. So why doesn't that... Uh, get massive attack from electrophiles. Oh, it does. But 
But when it comes to ethene, you have addition reactions. In fact, there's five addition reactions you have to learn. But with benzene, that electrophile doesn't add on. A plus B goes to AB. It swaps it out. It substitutes. So there seems to be a paradox there. But just to recap, let me uh, give you the five reactions of uh, alkenes. So they're all addition reactions, uh, and yet benzene is substitution. So why is that? Well, you kind of need to know that as well. Okay, so the benzene ring Actually, the electrons that whiz around, those pi electrons, give extra stability to the benzene ring. Uh, about 150 kilojoules of extra stability, kilojoules per mole. So if you're looking at an energy diagram, the benzene is a little lower than you'd expect it to be. And that extra ring stability from those delocalized electrons means that uh, substitution reactions, where the ring's broken but it's reformed again, so overall that's going to require less energy, uh, are preferred to addition reactions, where you'd have to break that super stable ring, and since you're not going to reform it, well, that's going to cost you a lot of energy. All right, out to the garden. I'm going to have a little frolic. Uh, uh, uh. Of course, I made a mistake on the video, and then I had to... Oh, man. Uh, uh, it's all dark. I don't think I, don't think I can have much of a frolic around here. I'm in a forest in the middle of Budapest. Oh, it's kind of beautiful though. And we're done. <laughs>